Okay, you guys, what is up? The King of Lightning is here today to do Hunter x Hunter 2011 episode 66 review, all right? 66 review. And of course, before I get started, look down in the description below for the link to this week's episode of Hunter x Hunter. Now, that being said, this episode overall was just a good episode of Hunter x Hunter. It really was, all right? From the beginning, where we have a mix of complex things going on here, where we see Killua finally become a full-fledged hunter by easily passing the exam, taking out, I mean, he took out everybody, just like, fairly quickly. I mean, clearly there was no one like Hisoka in this year's hunter exam. No, <laughs> no siree. Um, and of course, him going back to Green, him going back to Green Island, looking looking over the cards that Golden and Biscuit had had attained over the course of his time in the quote unquote real world. And then when when they try to use the contact, they see the name Corolla Lucifer, and it's like, whoa, hold on, hold on, wait, hold on, hold on, wait a second, we're like, we didn't meet this guy. And then we cut over the Phantom Troop, the Phantom Troop, and they realize the same thing that you know it's not really Corolla, it's something, it's someone else, and that it's like a message, like he must have. He, um, well, Shao Mark, he, he realized all this shit, because Shao Mark, he's like the smart member of the group, and Shao Mark, he realized that Kurolo probably hired someone to go into Green Island for him, and find a Nen user who could remove the Nen, that is placed on him by Kurapika, because if you look at the map, Green Island is directly east from Yorkson City, so clearly, this is the spot. And then, and I, I don't remember if this was actually in the manga, but then we see Soka come in and Soka's like, you know, like, I did that on purpose to let you guys know that, you know, the person we can find is here. And then he, like, leaves and shit because they have to accept, you know, the reality that Soka, even though Sphinx wants to, wants to kill his ass, they're like, no, you know, Soka's here for you. And Soka's main goal is to find someone to remove the Nen Placed on Corolo, so he can fight, and you know he can uh, get that epic boner that he always wants. All right, I mean, because he see like like in, in, in my personal opinion, right? He soaks is like he always gets hard on while fighting. He always gets these like hard ons, but he wants to have such a huge hard on where his dick will explode from his pants. Like fuck it, like he like that's the way it is with this guy. Like he just wants to have that massive epic hard on. Like a fucking rocket ship, like a, like a countdown five, four, three, two, one, uh, like, goon, uh, goon, like yo, like that's the way he is, man. He's looking for that massive hard on, and and he believes that Corolla will give him that massive hard on. I mean, shit, he should fight Gin. <laughs> oh, I would pay to see that. I would pay to see that. Um, Hisoka versus Git. Ugh, that just sounds nasty. All right, but um, so I mean that was good too. Uh, and then of course we go. Uh, we 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 see a quick scene where kill where Kripika, no where we see um Killua go back to Batara's mansion, talks to Kripika real quickly, and Kripika he actually knew like he knew full well, and this kind of irks Kir uh, Killua a little bit because you know Killua he's kind of like yeah like this motherfucker right here, but Kripika actually knew that because he could put Nen on someone and put him in a curse, then it makes sense that there could be someone else that can remove that curse via Nen as well. So it makes sense then. And, you know, I mean, that's the way it is. And we all see a scene where we see the result of uh, Nail losing her powers or getting her power stolen by Corolla. And we see Nosferatu and he is like, I mean, talk about a slump. Talk about us. I mean, he's on his grind. Super grind. He's on his super grind. He's like, fuck. What do I do? I need that green. I need my green. Green, bitch. But, um, no. I mean, he needs money. Uh, Kirpika's there to help him, I guess. I mean, not really. Because, you know, Kirpika, he's more concerned about the fucking, you know, the, uh, red eyes. And I don't mean the Shot Clan, obviously. I mean the Kurtuk Clan, right? You know, the beastly red eye clan. You know, like the clan that's, like, actually noteworthy of fucking mentioning. And, you know, you know, you know. Not, I mean, well, fuck you, me. He's fucking no spry. Like, who gives a shit? <laughs> who gives a shit? And that was pretty much it. 
And then part one ends off with Kilo coming back to Gon and then telling him that Trippy he knows. He knows and everything's good. And then Bits is like, okay, fine. So like now let's go and actually, you know, play the game Green Island. So part one with that whole entire stuff right there, all that was good. All that was good. It was good. It was like, come on, like it was it was good. Story wise, progression wise, character wise, uh, you know, it was it was all good. Um, reveal why you know like it was it was it was good it was good it was good pacing wise it was good animation wise it was good like it was I mean it's it's good it's all good um that's part one part two is is again more story progression and this time actually more relevant progression because it's the main group actually going and completing the game and well not completing but you know going through the process of playing the game uh they collect the cards like these uh, white beetles they have um uh what was it called. Some witch, like some witch potion card, you know, like a bunch of cards, you know, that they have co that they're collecting because they need multiple types of different cards so they can fill in the slots in their reserve section. Because remember, you need to you, you need you need to collect all ninety nine cards, and then you know you go even further beyond, you know, to go even further beyond, and that's the way it is. And you know, like it was good, it was good. Um, you know, seeing, well, not, well we, we didn't see, but Kill was stuck in some mansion, save some girl, you know, that kind of stuff, you know. Like, like, it was good, it was good. And from there, we cut over to a few scenes where Gon and Killua, after having a competition in this one town, and after getting this necklace, which prevents any attack spells from hitting you, they get contacted by these dudes that stole the Sword of Truth from them, when they first did the well, yeah, when they first did their junkin' rock paper scissors competition, and then at the same time we see a calling contact between Gen Gen, you know, like the you know uh, Zebomer and his squad and Tetsugera, and this is the first time we've actually seen Tetsugera, and it's probably like live action in the actual arc thus far, and Tetsugera, according to him, he has fucking he has ninety five, he has ninety five cards ninety. Uh, He's four away. He's almost done. He, he's almost done. And again, he's like, yo, I know that you have a lot of fucking cards, all right? I know that you, have, that you got at least 92. And me trading with you right now, not a good deal for me. Why? Because you get more cards, and then thus you're even closer to completing the game. And thus making all this shit effortless and useless. And he's like, well, you know, I'll give you three. And they're like, hold on, whoa, I'll give you three cards. It was like some, like, like two of these cards that I forgot, and like some baby dragon card. And then apparently, like, this card's hard to get. Because, like, when Gin, when, when Tezgar mentioned the baby dragon card, he's like, you know, his eyes lit up. So we see the process of Gen and his group discussing what they're going to do. At the same time, we see Gon and Killua, and like, they, they do the thing with, uh, you know, the guys, and they trade off. They go to the freaking, uh, they go to, like, the gambling thing. And then, you know, we see Killua use the risky, you know, like, the risky dice and shit. And he got the rainbow diamond. But, you know, he was like, yeah, <sighs> I can do this. I, yeah, let's do, let's do it again. Let's do it again. And it's like, okay, well, this one guy did it, like, five times. Boom, in his face. Face meshed up like fucking putty. And, yeah, basically, it's like, you know, no. Not working. They leave. And then that's the episode ends. But then we see Tetsugera. Well, no, well, we see Gen after some deliberation with the Risky Dice and his boys. They they agree to trade with Tetsugera. But in fact, it's a it's a plot to actually use Risky Dice and like um um this uh tax collector card to like steal like all their shit or like most of their high level shit. So that's pretty much the episode in a nutshell. Uh, I mean, I mean, yes, you know, that is the episode. I mean, really, because um, <laughs> that, that, that was it. And it was good. Like, it was good. Uh, overall, it was good because, again, now that we're actually in the game, we're actually having the story progression. And we're seeing going Killua, Biscuit. Now that, they're, now, that they're, now that they're done with their training, now that she feels now that she feels that she's that now that she feels that they're good in their actual, you know, then skills as of right now, they're ready to complete the game. And they're making strides. They're trading cards. They're collecting cards and making strides. At the same time, we're going to see conflicts and confrontation between the leading, I would assume, the leading parties. Get it? And his boys. 
and Tetsugera and his boys. And how that turns out, well, we'll see. We'll see. And that's pretty much it. I mean, again, overall, it was just a damn... It was good. It was a good episode of Hunter x Hunter. I liked it. I enjoyed it. I embraced that shit. I um, mean, that's the way it was. I mean, hey, Risky Dice. I mean, I liked how this episode consisted a lot of the fucking Risky Dice. I mean, if, you, if you're if you if you're bad, if you get out of that fucking red zone, then you, sir, are dead. <clears throat> you're fucking dead. Like, that's the way it is. I mean, you could be throwing that shit in like, the middle of, of like, the fucking savannah. And then you fucking, like, throw, and then you get a bat, all of a sudden this fucking lightning bolt hits you in the fucking face, like, it's over. <laughs> it's game over. So, I liked it. I liked it, alright? But yeah, I'm done. King Lightning, we have two good parts, and thus, overall, episode is, is it's a good episode of Hard Ice Hunter. I can't reiterate that anymore. So I'm out. Peace. Have a nice day. Rate. Comment. Subscribe. Peace!